Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. So for this one, we want to go ahead and look at custom ad points. So this is something that uh, uh, was introduced in RAD systems, and uh, I want to look at it and then maybe maybe let you know how you can use it. So it's available for all uh, systems in RAD systems. So right now I'm using Node.js, so I'm using Node RAD. So I want to look at custom endpoints. So here are some of my custom endpoints I've created, but these custom endpoints are coming from an external API. So if you look at them, what you notice is that uh, for the username, I'm currently using the username that is available in my uh, huh, in my application. So this is just how we used to do in like classic get active user. But now for this one, I'm doing a request or user dot the name of the field. All right, so I have this one called front history. So this is a transaction history of uh, transactions our user have been doing. So API key saved in my database and username is also saved in my database. So I'm just getting from there. So this API is ready to work. So uh, how you create an endpoint is that you come here, click on it. You select the controller, whichever you want. The controller is going to be the name of the table that you're creating. And now the action name is also going to be the name that you give your endpoint. So this one you can say test. So our endpoint is going to be API slash people slash test. But this is not what we want. So I'm just going to remove this. All right. So using this uh, API called trans history. Now the bottom here, there's something you notice now. If you need your response to be uh, returned to the front end, and where, wherever you're logging out your data, you need to add this response dot okay you need to write this less loss okay otherwise your data is not going to appear in the product i'll show you what i mean uh with that in a little bit so note our api is pay slash turn history all right so uh let's go to this page and i want to create a new page and call this page a transaction i'm just going to call it history okay so it's going to be a list page and i'm just going to go to this page and uh, go to the design i don't really need anything else here so i'm just going to remove this and remove that and then for this one i don't want this list page now so i'm just going to drag and drop a model then put that in then you can delete that model and that page is uh, uh left out so i'm just going to drag and drop a custom view here and i'm just going to say uh, code here so like i'm just going to write this so that i can refer to it when i go to my code editor now i want to go to now my project menu and i will add this uh, page i just created here so that i can be able to access it easily i'm just going to go ahead and look for people and select this page i've created and call this history here all right then i don't really need this and now we can publish our application so if we go back to our page here, so this is a uh, application I'm building on. So if we go to our page here, we should be able to see uh, this new page created here. So we can always uh, confirm from this end that the generation is uh, ready. Now, as it generates, I want to now go ahead and open my code editor. And I want to go all over to where I have my application at. So I want to look for that application that I'm building. Uh, which I've opened up here. So this is the one I'm building and I want to go to the front end and go to the source go to pages And I want to go to the page where we have that which is people here and now we have this page we have created called uh, History.view. So this is a page that we have just created So this is where we are going to be writing our code and as you can see the one we created is called code here All right, so now if we go back to our front end of our application now we are going to be having uh, the, the what do you call it the link to the table that we are just created it's called it's basically a page all right so we're just going to uh view it and uh, maybe we can uh, see what we get Alright, so if this is not working, make sure your server is running just fine. So make sure the server is running just fine. Let's see. Alright, so the issue was the server was not running. So if you click on the server, it's going to now run your application and open up where we are going. Alright, great. So now uh, what we are left with is to now start writing our code. So uh, the first two things we are going to look at is how to call an API in RAS systems. So that's what we are going to be doing for this uh, video. 
So we want to call uh, the API, the custom endpoint we created, get some data from it and display it in the front end. So that's, how, well, that's what we want to achieve for this one. So we're just going to come here and start writing our code. So the very first thing we do is that we create, a, a f inside our data function, we create a, a something that we, whatever the, we are going to be using to get our data in the front end. So let me show you what I mean. So if I come to this uh, object uh, data here and we say uh, display, it doesn't have to be anything. You can just come here and say display uh, hello world. So this is basically just holding data in our uh, backend. So if now we come here and change this to display whatever we just coded down there, which is going to be uh, it's going to be uh, display. Now this is going to show the data that we have just created, which is called hello world. So all right. So it seems this is uh, taking a while. I will pause. Okay. So our page is displaying here. So we're just going to go down here and click on the page we just created and called history. So now, as you can see here, we can now see the data we added in our code, which is hello world. So if we come down here and change this and change it to something like uh, hello world again then we should be able to see that change because it's coming from that data so basically that is a value that's going to be holding our call our response from the database so for now we don't need it to have any data so we can keep it here as an array something like that so now all we need to do is go ahead and write our code that's going to be fetching data from the backend right so we can do it in the in the in the methods or we can create our own function here called mounted all right so we're going to create a function called mounted here uh leave that comma there and close this so inside here this is how we're going to create our code so we want to fetch data from the backend from the custom endpoint we created so you start it like this so this is how you do it in rad just like this dot uh, 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 api dot get okay so this is basically just going to be getting data from the api now here we enter the name of the endpoint we created so the name of the endpoint we created was this which is our pay trans history so we want to get this data from here so we're just going to go to copy from up to that point and then you just go to come here and paste it here it's going to be pay trans slash trans history and then you're going to come here dot then so it's carry like uh, the, the way we do it in axios and then you're just going to come here and take our response so we're going to take that response use our arrow and inside here we're going to say let results is going to be equals to response dot data so this is basically going to be getting our data from the uh, backend now so what we want to do because this response is getting data from this uh, endpoint so the result is holding data that's coming from the response now we want these results to be equal to to be added to the display so we want to get now the display so how you get the display outside data uh, function we come here and say this dot display now remember display is this uh, whatever we added in here so it's going to be this dot display is equals to results now the display is going to be displaying uh, the last one from the api now from that point we just need to come down here and check now response if this is uh and not it then we just come here now always remember to put a comma after you finish that there now here we now want to say if else then we come here and say this dot loading is equals to false so after uh, the data is returned then you want to stop loading now if we save this data here we should be able to get a response from the api in the front end so that's generally how we want to display so let's see what we get you can always track the progress of your publishing here and let's see all right so there you go so we're getting all these responses from the back end of the api now remember we have this so the, this one you need to know how to read json so this is status and this is the response so the response is holding all these transactions so we can navigate to this response by adding this response to our results so we can come here in our data response.data, data then you can say dot response now these dot response we're getting 
we are getting it from here so if you want the status you can do dot status and it's only going to be showing the status which is equals to true so now for this situation because we only want like, the last ones now there we go so if we want to access now the transaction you say less ones dot transaction so that's how we want to uh, display this data so that's it now the next thing you need to do is uh maybe align this data systematically so we can do that by going uh over to where we have our code here in the display so we can write another code here and say uh, div class okay come here and say so basically i write i like writing my code here and say that code so that whenever i'm removing these from the editor to run systems i can be able to see where i started you can say div class is equals to uh call them the of call sm12 all right doesn't really matter then up here we can come here and say uh div uh, we can just say you will we can just say you will you can say v4 it's going to be equal to item okay in display all right so let me explain what we did here so in php this is where we used to do a for each loop so instead of doing for each loop in Vue.js, we say item dot display. So we want to take one item in this uh, array, which is display. So I'm not getting display from anywhere else. We're just uh, using it from here. So this is the display. So in case you have this code displayed, then you just come here and say item in displayed. So it, it really matters. It's all based on the name yeah, you give to your uh, value there. In uh, this, so we say that. Now here we have a key. So this is basically the key that is unique to every uh, item. So if we go to our transaction history, I don't know what is unique here, but if we don't have an ID, basically is not it. So we have so we need to have something that is uniquely identifying every transaction. So I don't really think this is a good way of having this. So uh, we can just use uh, transaction reference. Yeah, transaction reference is unique for everything. Yeah. So the transaction reference is unique for everything. So just going to copy this and copy it. So we are accessing transactions dot transaction uh, reference there. So you come here and say item dot transaction uh, reference. So uh, let me just test this first so that we don't waste too much time. Uh, I need to test if this is uh, we can access that directly. All right, all right. So that's working just fine. So I just uh, reached transactions all the way up to the end. So what we need to do is uh, because we are only trying to access this, we want to now uh, take this and put it at the bottom there. So let me just return back so that we can see what I mean. Uh, but you're going to add this at the mounted function at the bottom. So inside the mounted here, the response we want to pass in transactions. Now what I mean is you see these transactions is the one it's an array that is holding an object uh objects so this is an array holding the objects so we want to first of all go to this then we can use a v4 uh, for the array so we can say dot transaction so remember we are only getting the name of uh this so if we are api is giving back something else you just need to know how to read the json so it's basically the same thing as you can see we are able to access the array directory now in our v4 where we are writing our v4 come here and say ul is equals to, uh, v4 is equals to item in display okay and then in our key which is doing a v bind is equals to item dot now we want to now access something that is inside the array so something that is unique which is transaction reference so the transaction reference is never the same as another transaction reference so it's the same is unique so you're just going to take that transaction reference there and we save this now we can close the ul and now we can open up an li a list and close that now in the list we want to come here and say uh-huh item dot something that we want from the api so we can say amount so we can say item dot amount 
so amount I'm getting it from here so we we'll always know it's case sensitive and we can say the transaction type we can maybe also take the transaction type and we come here and say uh -huh. so we can come here and put that dash that's really not for the code that's just a separator and we say item dot uh, transaction type so let's see what we get by saving this code here great now if you come down here you can see that now we have this code being aligned uh, uh, at the bottom there so we can always remove uh, let's remove this so that we can see only what we have created now if we go back you notice that we'll be able to see this uh, differently now another thing you can do is put a queue separator so a queue separator i like putting it because uh, it separates our code for quasar queue separator so just put some lines in in between them there so now as you can see this is uh displaying this uh code the right way or basically how we want it to be so generally you get everything uh display there now let me explain what we did so we created uh this data this this value inside our data object and now this 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 value is empty by default so what we do is that we load it up every time we are creating we are getting a lesson for the database now which is in the mounted here okay so this is in the mounted now you t you write this code inside your your mounted function and it's going to be pulling the data every time the page loads now in case you don't want the data to be pulled every time the case loads you can just take this code and put it inside a function inside the methods and then you can put a button that whenever you click it it displays this data so uh, let me show you what i mean so if we uh copy this you can copy this and come here and maybe just for now comment this out and we come here and say uh fill up so we want to create a a function called fill up inside our inside our methods put that comma there and we want to paste our code here all right now this is a code we have here so this is a function that is holding our api the code to call the api so what we do is we go at the top of our page here and create a button so you can come here and say q b t n and then you can say our uh, icon is going to be equal to fingerprint and we're going to say a uh, label is going to be equal to populate and then our click event is going to be equal to the function we just created called fill up now whenever you click on this button it's going to look for methods and uh run that function there so uh that's it so let's now see what we get now the effect is the same so whenever we click on this database our values are going to be displayed in the front end so uh, i mean whenever you click on that uh, button it's going to run our function and display our data in the front end so if we click on this button here it's now going to display all this code so instead of you having to see uh the data in the front end here automatically you can have a button that when you click it you see the data so I hope that video was helpful guys and I hope that it will help you uh, understand uh, add points and maybe know how you can do it. So that will be it for this video guys and see you in the next one.